I'd like to welcome Dr. Irvin <coughs> Epstein, Jr., a principal investigator at Children's Hospital Oakland Research Institute. His research focuses on non-melanoma skin cancers and, in particular, basal cell carcinomas. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Would you discuss the background of the compound GDC0449, the hedgehog pathway inhibitor? As you say, this compound inhibits hedgehog signaling. And the reason for using it in basal cell carcinomas is that 15 years ago, it was found that all basal cell carcinomas that you'll see, and all those that you won't see, have upregulation of hedgehog signaling. And we think this is pivotal to basal cell carcinogenesis. This tumor is the commonest human cancer. In some areas, there are as many as, as all other cancers put together. And so because hedgehog signaling is pivotal, this was a prime candidate for the use of a hedgehog inhibitor in it. What were the key findings of your phase two randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of this compound for prevention of basal cell carcinomas in basal cell nevus syndrome patients? There are really three findings. The first is that the use of this drug, one pill a day, completely blocks the development of new basal cell carcinomas that are large enough to require surgical extirpation. The second finding is that it shrinks the basal cell carcinomas that are present. In fact, if people take it long enough, it appears that all the basal cell carcinomas, at least clinically, disappear. We indeed, we've seen no evidence of any tumor in over 2,000 that we followed that is resistant to the effects of this drug. The third thing we assessed was the tolerability and safety of the drug. We saw several kinds of adverse events that indeed prevented people, most of the people, it looks like, from taking it for more than a year. The first of these is hair loss, and that is expected because hedgehog signaling is important in the growth of hair. The second is taste loss, which indeed may be reasonably explained, at least by the fact that, hed that hedgehog signaling is crucial to the development of taste buds, at least in embryonic life, and presumably to their maintenance in adult life. And associated with that taste loss is a weight loss that these patients, actually most of them are fairly happy with, but at least in one patient became so severe that we required her to stop the drug. The third, which is really unexplained, is muscle cramps, the kind of cramps you get when you stretch in bed at night, but in this case, they get more severe cramps. What were your methods for study? We randomized 41 patients in a two-to-one ratio to drug to placebo over the course of about 15 months. This was the number calculated to give a statistically significant result. As it turned out, it was far more than we needed, and we decided not to, originally, not to count tumors until three months after starting to give a wash-in period. But the truth is that we could see at one month in most patients on the drug a significant decrease when we compared the tumors with those at the, uh, with the pictures at baseline. Um, what are the next steps in your work with this compound? Well, it's, as I said, only marginally tolerated. Marginally in the sense that for somebody with a sporadic tumor, a single tumor, it really would not be tolerated. For some of these people who start with two dozen tumors and we're having surgeries twice, three, four times a month, then it's tolerated and they're willing to undergo the side effects. But perhaps intermittent dosing, perhaps a schedule of a few months on and a few months off, or a few months on and then intermittent maintenance dosing might be more effective. Dr. Epstein, thank you so much.